In my last video, I talked about the 10 channel amplifier that I'm building. And a big part of that is it will include active crossovers. So I had to design and prototype that to test it out. And that's what you see right here, this tiny board with three op amps on it. Um, I do it, it's very similar to the amplifier itself, the amplifier boards. I wanted to make sure that they absolutely work <laughs> before I send off to get the boards made professionally. And this, I think, is the best way to do it. And that's to make a prototype board that uses the same layout. And that's what we have right here. Now, before I go into what's involved in testing this and showing the actual results, I want to talk briefly about what exactly it does. This is a crossover. It's a bandpass filter in that it separates a range of frequencies to send to the individual driver. In this case, I set this one up to drive the woofer and it's going to be outputting a frequency range from 80 Hertz up to around 350 Hertz. So that's what these um, components here, these capacitors and resistors that are on the board, that's what they determined. Now, the first thing I did was I drew this up in microcap. There are four stages here, one after the other. First one is the input buffer. The second stage is the high pass filter. And like I said, that one's set to 80 Hertz. So what it does is it allows frequencies from 80 Hertz and above to pass, and it rolls off frequencies below 80 Hertz. The next stage is the low pass filter, and that actually cuts off frequencies above 350 Hertz. It allows lower frequencies to go through, but it rolls off anything above 350 Hertz. And these filters are fourth order in that they will roll off the at the frequency at 24 decibels per octave. That's a fairly sharp uh, roll off. I originally planned this to have 12 decibels per octave. That's a second order filter, but I actually tried it out in my listening room by setting up the DSP with, that, with those filter slopes and I compared it to the steeper 24 decibel or fourth order um, filters and I preferred the the steeper ones. They sounded better and they gave me the better results. So I went with that. It's a little bit more complex, but really not that big of a deal. And it's best to get this kind of thing out of the way in the beginning so that you're not stuck with something that you're not happy with. So the last stage is the output buffer. And this actually has a little bit of gain and it allows me to adjust the level of each crossover so that you know I can send a signal to the woofer and if it's too high I can reduce it with the uh, pot that's on the board. Same with the mid-range, same with the tweeter, same with the mid-woofer. All of them will have individual um, level controls that are adjusted by this um, little trim pot that's on the board. Now I'll have to do this during setup so I'll you know, the, the amplifier will be sitting there with the lid off and I'll be able to adjust these because the, all these boards will be facing up. So the next step, and this is usually the most time consuming, is to make a board layout that works. Uh, this is going to be a double sided board traces on the top and on the bottom. And it's fairly compact because I have 10 of these inside that amplifier and they'll be like I said, they'll be sitting up towards the top facing up, so I'll be able to adjust that trim pot. And you can see the board layout here on the software that I use. And after I have that done, I've got two options. I can send that design off to a board house and have the boards professionally made and take a chance, or I can make my own board like I did right here and test it out to make sure, absolutely certain that it works. And that's what I did. So I took the board and I put some wires on here for power right here. This runs on a dual supply, 15 volts. So 15, zero, 15 volts DC. So you need three wires for that. 
There are three op amps on here, like I said before. There's an input and an output, and I've got those connected to um, these three and a half millimeter plugs that plug into the sound card. And I used, actually, I used the scope first before I brought out the computer just to test to see what was happening and get a visualization on it. Then I set this up and I used REW to run the frequency response, very similar to the way you would with a speaker when you're measuring a speaker. So it sends a sweep in from 10 hertz right up to 20 kilohertz, and it measures the response that this thing has. Now, before this, in key, in not in KeyCab, but in MicroCap, I could run a simulation and predict what this is going to do. And that's, you know, that's really good because you can, you can set these up really accurately that way. And I'll have that to compare to the actual measured performance. So I ran the sweep and you can see that on the scope and you can see it on the computer. And when we compare it to the predictor response, it's nearly an exact match. There are some tolerances here with these components. Um, you know, capacitors are usually rated 10%. I actually did some simulations to compare, you know, variations in the capacitor values, and I really didn't see a huge amount. And I think the best way to go about it is to try to get it as close as possible, but not to be too overly anal about it. You know, try to keep things within reason. So yeah, that is it in a nutshell. That is what this thing does and how it works. And like I said, I'll be needing 10 of these to put in the amplifier. And um, in other news, I got the boards for the amplifiers. These are the actual amp boards. In the last video I talked about, well, in the last video I tested the prototype uh, for that, which is this one right here. I got wires attached. You can see it right here. And this is the professionally made board, slightly bigger. Uh, I found with the prototype board that my layout was a little bit tight, so I spaced things out a little bit more, a little bit more comfortable, and came up with this one right here. And I have to say that even though this works and I can do it here at home, this looks so much better. And as you know, if it looks better, it's definitely going to sound better.